So good afternoon, uh, brethren. Um, I want to wish um, every one of us uh, a blessed weekend and uh, thank uh, our primates as well as uh, all the bishops and uh, clergy uh, for a beautiful conduct of the Joshua generation, which uh, came to a wrap uh, today. I saw, I was able to see some of the proceeding. So uh, it was beautiful to see all the young men uh, conduct themselves and the zeal, the vigor with which uh, the whole proceedings went. So may we see more of that tribe in Jesus' name. But that's uh, in deep contrast to uh, the topic uh, that I wish to discuss this um, afternoon. Uh, you know, the topic, of course, as you can see on the screen, is uh, the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. We're launching from crisis to crisis. And Christ obviously died for more than this. By way of introduction, I am Dr. Ayo Aditola. Dr. Ayo Aditola in full. I am a physician. I live in Canada. I've been here for over two decades now. I do video blogging uh, on the Reform Niger TV, which we've put on ice for now. And these are some of the topics I've done that are Anglican Church related. Um, we did uh, one on uh, Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder just last year. You can find this on uh, our platform, Reform Niger TV, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, we did one for the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, the topic, the subject of our topic today. And um, we actually did one uh, to confront some of the heresies that uh, that gentleman on our screen, Apostle Joshua Selman, uh, who seems to be a favorite of uh, Anglican, the ACNN, which is the uh, our TV platform, as well as uh, the Anglican Church of Nigeria social media platform, seems to be uh, platforming and profiling a lot these days. Uh, this gentleman likes to serially and subtly attack uh, biblical principles like uh, John the Baptist, uh, Apostle Paul, and uh, we put out uh, a video uh, detailing uh, his attack, serial attack on John the Baptist, and it's available again on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, you can take a look at that. But that's not our topic today. One, what is bothering me today is in the last few months, we've seen uh, on social media and in the news, uh, headlines like this one, Church of Nigeria suspends Bishop Oji as he abandons Konnam for Atna. Church of Nigeria suspends Bishop Adebogun for insubordination. U.S. court stops the Anglican Church of Nigeria from dissolving in the based diocese. Uh, alleged utterances in the Cuba lacks power to suspend Adibogun, says uh, Mr. Falano, who is a well-known and highly respected uh, uh, advocate lawyer in Nigeria. Of course, there was the viral video um, uh, of the so-called white bishop who was becoming, bringing gay preaching to a Nigerian church. And there was a shrill voice of that woman saying, show me in the Bible where it says same sex. Is allowed. Of course, that's not true. That's just slander. That bishop wasn't saying that. But it was in a Nigerian church in New Jersey, and that video went viral. And the Nigerian church never put out, to the best of my knowledge, never put out um, if, uh, any information saying that's not true. But these are the things we are in the news for. Uh, that's the court filing of the elders of the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, the uh, church, the diocese that is based in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and that took uh, bishops Adibogun, Bishop Nathan Kano, and the primate uh, Ndukuba to court to stop the dissolution of the diocese. Actually, two dioceses uh, were dissolved. These are the only two Nigerian dioceses in uh, North America, that is Canada and the United States, but the headquarters are seated in the United States. 
uh, it's in uh, it's this this information is in the open. Anyone can go to the court filings and take a look. I've just taken a screen grab for everyone to see. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it's so bad that uh, in the court, some of the court filing, the Church of Nigeria is actually being accused of theft also. And uh, things are, are degenerating and we we need to uh, do something uh, before it goes uh, south any further. Um, some of the other things that are going on uh, it will include the or shown northeast diocese has been without a bishop since uh, that bishop was suspended in August of 2022. The Joss See has been vacant. Well, it's only been recently, but recently six months. Uh, I I hear some disquiet too, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut on that uh, about some of the treatment that is being meted out to the retired bishop of that diocese, that bishop sat for over 30 years. Uh, and he did, he was stellar. He's a well sought after bishop. In fact, someone like me is one of the reasons I came back, I came to a liturgical church and chose the Anglican church is because of people like um, Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi, to be precise. Um, uh, And he, he deserves to be treated well. And he served as the secretary of GAFCON for well over a decade until his recent retirement. And the Gomina diocese were festering with crisis until very recently, um, there was the case of the removal without consultation of Bishop Oyekmen as the, the lead bishop, uh, as the coordinator of the Anglican Youth Fellowship. Uh, coordinator, as well as Bishop Adewale, that's the Bishop of Para, as the ACM coordinator, all of this without consultation, sending really what are offending letters to retired senior archbishops, and even some of the current ones, uh, generally creating a culture of bullying and disregard for Church of Nigeria process, uh, like the recent suspension of the very Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, uh, without laid down processes, you know, all these vague uh, charges, that, you know, no trial, you, know, you suspend, and then after that, you now constitute a, 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 a committee to look into. You know, it's like you punish first and then you consider a trial later. That, that's not that's not right. Uh, preventing serving bishops. This is the one that rankles me most. Preventing serving bishops from going to jurisdictions of the Church of Nigeria to actually go and minister to Christians, fellow Anglicans and Christians. And I'm going to give multiple examples, just wait. And then dissolving an existing Anglican diocese where there were no problems. You may have problems with the bishop, but there, were, there was no problem in these churches. These are churches that are growing, started by previous primates. Obviously, he, they will, I'm sure they will claim that it was the Holy Spirit that led them uh, to start those ministries. And those ministries were thriving. And uh, somebody's probably going to make the case that night was the Holy Spirit that says we should dissolve them. But And worse still, these are cases that have been adjudicated going on in the, in the court. And as at yesterday, I saw with my own eyes letters that these primates have sent in a divide and rule kind of process, appointing new canon missioners, basically to divide new canon mission, and I'm talking 12th April 2024, new canon missioners in a case that is presently in court. David says in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went to the skirts of his garment. And in verse 3, he likens it, and he says, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion, 
For there the Lord commands the blessing, even life forevermore. If we cannot be united, how can we gather together in the presence of God and therein receive God's blessing? People are full of bile towards one another. And I'm not talking of ordinary church members. Primates, Ndukuba, I beg of you, you are a uh, Oluri Ebi. You are sitting in a position that is vested with the instrument of unity for the Church of Nigeria. You are the chief teacher. That instrument you hold, that office you hold, is that of unity. Do not divide the church any further. Somebody says it's a, must, it's a very Anglican thing to do, is to fight. That's not the church of Cranman. That's not the church of J.I. Parker. That's not the church of John Stott. That people like us have come to admire. That's not the church of Jesus Christ. Not as commanded in scripture, sir. These are beautiful, uh, handsome primates. By the way, I think it's time somebody beautifies this logo. I mean, I see the mitre, I see the cross, but it's smudged. Was this thing constructed during the time of Bishop Ajayi Crowder? For God's sake, time to change it. But anyway, this is a handsome primate. He's a well-studied man, ordained as a deacon at the age of 23. All he has done in his life is the church business. So he's not a novice. He's done this. He has a master. He has a double master's from Durham, from Princeton. He's been dean. He was a missionary diocesan, missionary and the dead diocesan bishop of Gombe. He was as bishop of Just Province. And then in 2020, he became Archbishop Primate and Metropolitan of the Church of Nigeria, the fifth such Nigerian to host to hold that position. He has worked on church documents like the Book of Common Prayer, the hymnal for the Church of Nigeria, worked in Bible translation, helped on documenting a Jesus documentary in a film. He even caught that controversy when he stated that homosexuality virus needs to be expunged, which earned him a rebuke from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. So that's a, a, a Archbishop and Primate. But the trouble we're discussing today started uh, for a while. It's been brewing for a while. Uh, but I wanted to give it a bit of context so that we understand. Because I find that even some clergy don't understand this. They think, oh, it's just... It's because he's trying to that uh, primate is trying to protect the Church of Nigeria from gay problems of those North Americans. But no, that it's that's not the issue here. Please bear me out. Back in 2000, 24 years ago, Primate Akiola, God bless him, is our Baba is alive and well, and may God preserve him for us. Same thing our Primate Oko initiated a move for chaplaincy, for Nigerians who are in North America. A beautiful thing, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, I mean, Acts chapter six, you know, people tend to go to where their people are. And the Episcopal Church then, under Frank Griswold, who's the president, oh, by the way, I need to acknowledge uh, uh, Professor Lukmono, who documented these things in his letter of complaint to primates in Dukuba. So I got this from him, but I also got, I'm also speaking of some of these from my own knowledge, having followed the, Anglican Church of Nigeria, as well as the Episcopal Church uh, for well over two decades myself. <clears throat> and also from the book that was published at the 10th anniversary of uh, the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity. So the Episcopal Church even uh, funded some of these. Unfortunately, by 2003, under Bishop Frank Griswold, he passed away last year, actually, at the age of 85. The Episcopal Church, Episcopal Church is the Anglican Church of Canada, of uh, USA. <clears throat> they had for years, actually for decades, even before 2000, they had been going on this liberal bend. They don't really believe the Bible is the word of God and all sort of things. So anyway, they chose Gene Robinson, who had divorced his wife and was living with his male partner. They uh, elected him a gay, uh, they elected him a bishop in the Episcopal Church. That led to a broken communion. Broken communion means the Anglican communion worldwide. Um, many, especially in the what we call the global south, who are essentially conservative and Bible believing, decided no, we're not having this. So uh, the Church of Nigeria um, began active plans of church planting led by Archbishop Adebi, your blessed memory, and Archbishop Anne, Anne Kwenwa. 
And uh, the Church of Nigeria started a mission here called Kana. Kana just means Convocations of Anglicans in North America. That's the name Nigeria gave it. Now, means uh, is British American. Uh, he was appointed as a coordinator, and Reverend Nathan Kano marked that name. That's a very important name as we proceed, because you're going to hear that name a few more times. Was appointed as the communications director. And Nigeria subsequently elected uh, Canon Means as a missionary bishop for this Nigerian Anglican mission in North America, and it was consecrated with about 20 to 25 Nigerian led churches. So, you know, when I say Nigerian led, you know, there were Americans, obviously, Canon Means and some others, but this is a Nigerian led initiative. So, in 2006, by 2007, four bishops. Suffragan bishops, you know, Amis, Anderson, Fagbamiye, and Kano were appointed. Again, Nathan Kano. These were suffragan bishops. Suffragan just means assistant bishops. And by 2008, you know, the plan was, was to have what they call regionalization, you know, meaning that they will basically divide up North America and the churches in those areas will flow to these bishops. But that's not what happened. Basically, uh, Kano means, I think he dropped the ball there. They allowed churches to choose whichever bishops they were going to follow. So the white people, white church, white led churches chose bishops, Means and Amis and Anderson. And then guess what happened? The Yoruba led ones chose Bishop Fagbami, the Igbo led ones chose Bishop Khan. Just be imagine how big Canada and not and uh, America is. And uh, that, this was the kind of thing. So chaos. But that's, that's not even the issue. <clears throat> so some fracture essentially is beginning to happen here. But by 2008, because of the nonsense that the Episcopal Church did, Nigeria was not the only one that started missions. Rwanda did, uh, Kenya did, uh, Southern Cone. Southern Cone is, you know, Brazil and all that. They all, all, they all did, and there were other, people, other places too. So Bishop Primate Akimala was able to gather all these people together with other primates. And they had this uh, um, organization called, they started this organization called GAFCON, ably secretary by our own Archbishop Benjamin Quash of Joss. And they gathered together, beautiful conference, beautiful communique, excellent. And uh, they agreed together, you know, to be Bible led and all of that stuff. And that essentially led to ACNA, Acna is Anglican Church in North America. So they formed a rival Bible-believing Anglican movement in North America. This was basically to help Anglicans in North America to start their own church uh, that is not liberal. As Bishop Akinola retired in 2010, as Bishop Oku came in, more bishops were elected for the Kana mission. And by 2012, this Nigerian mission became dioceses. Now remember, those other countries that came in, they essentially had surrendered. Not all of them, some of them had surrendered to the ACNA. Nigeria was always discussing, should we, should we not? ACNA kept insisting they want Nigeria to completely surrender. Nigeria really kept saying, I will talk about it. They kept delaying, let's put it that way. But what happened was the Nigerian bishops who are here sort of were given access. So they, they call it a dual citizenship. They were bishops of the Nigerian church. They were also bishops in ACNA. But discussions were going. Anglicans always discuss. By 2019, Nigeria ordained more bishops, which ACNA wasn't happy with, but it happened. So bishops like Debogun, Bishop Adewumi, Bishop Anagogu, Bishop Noibwe were elected suffragan bishops. Suffragan just means assistant bishops. Things led to one another. Bishop Oji, by 2020, a new uh, primate of Nigeria came in. Bishop Oko retires. Bishop Undukuba, the present uh, primate, comes in. Bishop Oji is unhappy for whatever reason. Uh, well, for many reasons, he leaves and joins ACNA. He wanted to take the his own diocese, the Anglican diocese of the West in. That didn't work out. 
he suspended. That eventually was uh, rescinded. And then in 2023, six months ago, uh, without consulting the priests or, or, or members of this vast Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, and we all know that, that uh, Bishop Ndukub, Archbishop Ndukuba and Bishop of ADUTT, Adibogun, they didn't get along. It's, it's a, it's a well-known thing. They didn't get along. But there were other issues, but they didn't get along. The Archbishop dissolves. He claims that it's because he's having this discussion. Uh, he doesn't want to be planting in the jurisdiction of ACNA. But that's not true because ACNA came out with their own letter saying they never asked that the Church of Nigeria should dissolve uh, dioceses. They've been consistent on what they're asking for. They were asking for a complete release of this diocese to them, not to dissolve them and keep doing what they're doing. They want it to be released to them. But Nigeria is not releasing EDOTT or EDOTW to ACNA. They're just basically dissolving and then they want to make all these suffragan bishop, uh, missionary bishops, which, by the way, the House of Bishops rejected at their, meet, at their latest meeting. So, long story. So, anyway, they dissolve without consulting the members of these dioceses or the priests in these dioceses in September. The reason we have a court case is the Archbishop appoints Bishop Nathan Cano, who about a decade ago, because he kept having conflicts with Mins. Remember when Kana was started, Mins, he was the communication director, Bishop Mins was the leader, but eventually they both became bishops and but there were conflicts between them, long story. Eventually Bishop Kano was translated to Nigeria, to a diocese called Abangwa North. So he's been in Nigeria for a long time, but recently after all the, you know, actually since Bishop uh, OG left, um, the primate has appointed uh, Bishop Kano to be the leader, or the director of the mission in North America. So he's been the bishop of his diocese in Abangua and he's also overseeing North America. This is what's going on. So after the dissolution was reached in September in Newi. The, the elders of the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity have been asking for audience with the primate. This is six months, seven months now. The primate has not given it. He has not met with them in person. He has not met with them by Zoom. Or, you know, in these days of social media, you would think that some time will be created. The elders even took paid advertisements in popular Nigerian newspaper, Guardian. I think Guardian, maybe Vanguard, I'm not sure. But at least I know Guardian. I saw that. In all fairness, Bishop Unuigwe, who is my personal friend, he has spoken to me many times about this, said he has offered to go and meet some of these elders, but that they rejected. But they don't want to speak to Bishop Unuigwe. They want to speak with the chief, the sin, the chief, let me call him the chief pastor. Jesus is ultimately our chief pastor. They want, they want to speak to the primate. The primate has not created time to speak with them. And the the, the the dissolution of this diocese was supposed to take place, to take effect on the 2nd of February. So a week to 2nd, uh, 2nd February, they decided to go to court. They had waited so long, uh, September, September, October, November, December, January. So they went to court. They, they made a case filing in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. So that's why that's why we're where we, where we are now. And so they sued Bishop Adebogon, they sued Nathan Kano, whose picture you can see here, and uh, Archbishop Ndukuba. And uh, that's and guess what? At the court on the on the first day, because you could you don't have to come physically, you could appear by Zoom. Uh, Archbishop Ndukuba didn't appear. Bishop Kano didn't appear. Only Bishop Adebogo made an appearance, and they did ask whether they had received whether they asked Bishop Adebogo if uh, these two other bishops, senior bishops had um, received the summons. He said he was aware. Obviously, Archbishop Nukuba and Kano were unhappy that he had told the court. <laughs> so guess what? Within hours, he was suspended for his subordination or whatever 
jargon uh, that they were able to muster. It was suspended. And to make it bite, they, there are pictures of Bishop Adeba going all over the social, in social media space. They chose this one with his wife. It's the plaster it all over. It's on the ACNN TV. That's the TV station of the Anglican Church. They put it on the uh, their Facebook. They put it on every social media. But the question is why? This is a cloak and dagger kind of situation. Why are you plastering the image of his wife? You leave this kind of thing for people like Abacha, you know, mean-spirited guys. The church shouldn't be involved in this kind of stuff. You have you want to plaster the news that you've suspended him? Great. Put his picture there. He's, I'm sure he's man enough to take it. Sister, Sister Tudo, I attend church with her. I take communion with her. She's, uh, she, she can't hurt a fly. She's not involved in all this, uh, uh, all this uh, intrigue. I mean, it may be an Anglican thing to always want to fight for God's sake. How, how is this church business to try and embarrass her and plaster her image all over the world? Because you, you are playing games. This is not right. These are the Anglicans and these are the bishops of the one diocese. Remember, I'm not talking of the other diocese. You know, the other diocese really doesn't have a substantive diocese since Bishop Oji left. A substantive uh, diocesan bishop has not been appointed. So they have a suffragan bishop, uh, Irona. Um, so he's not really putting up any fight. But so this is Bishop Adibo going to your extreme left. That's Bishop Adibo. is already retired. That's, of course, as Bishop Ndukuba, as Bishop Noigbe, as Bishop Anagogu. These two are suffragan bishops in the diocese. They are assistant bishop. So Bishop Adibo, who is putting up a fight. So he in addition to uh, being in court along with Bishop Kano and the primate, he's also suing the primate in Nigeria, you know, with his own bishop, uh, with his own lawyer, uh, Falano. So that's intriguing. We'll see where things go. Uh, I've already explained this particular page. Uh, now, it's this is what this is what the primate of the Anglican Church in North America has said. This is the letter of uh, dissolution of the uh, from the House of Bishops signed. I didn't put page one with the signature of uh, the primate is there, but I didn't put it just for space. But this is what the primate, primate beach folly of the Anglican Church in North America has said. Let me read. It says, we were repeatedly assured by primate, Ndu, primate Ndu Kuba that he will happily release us fully into Akna if that will serve our mission more effectively. The several protocols, you know, they have protocol one, protocol two, protocol three, or whatever. Uh, the several protocols signed by the Church of Nigeria and the Anglican Church in North America also bear this out. And yet, the Church of Nigeria continues to refuse to release her ministry here to the Gafcon province here, which she held. Nigeria, in all honesty, held to form ACNA. I am now hearing of plans of the Church of Nigeria to create more missionary dioceses and elect more suffragan bishops in North America. This plan violates Christian charity. It undermines the mission of ACNA in her own geographical territory. Let me give you an example. Imagine if ACNA, because they have more money, right? If they start sponsoring people like renegades in Nigeria, like Bishop Awe, that was a Bishop Awe, who created uh, an, another Anglican movement in Nigeria some years ago. They have, they're there. They're actually there in Nigeria. They, they are not part of the Nigerian Church of Nigeria. They are also, they also see they are also Anglican. Imagine if these guys start financing that movement. That's what they're complaining about here. This plan violates Christian char charity in her own geographical territory, creates confusion and disunity in GAFCON, and possibly violates the 2008 Jerusalem Declaration, especially Article 11, which states that we are committed to the unity of all those who know and love Christ and to building authentic ecumenical relationships. We recognize the orders and jurisdictions of those Anglicans who uphold orthodox faith and practice, and we encourage them to join us in this mission. The Nigerian Archbishop has steadfastly refused to reciprocate evangelical rapprochement with the orthodox North American problems. Look, I'm not trying to make a case for Akna here. I'm just detailing for you what's going on.
That's Archbishop uh, Foley Beach. That's in Cuba. They meet regularly at uh, GAFCON retreats. I'm sure they, they, they have seen pictures of them together. In fact, Archbishop Foley Beach, three years ago, visited Nigeria. It was hosted by Archbishop Ndukuba. They were in Lagos together. They met the Lagos state governors together, all sort of things like that. But I don't know the game that Nigeria is playing here. Oh, you know, God bless their soul. This is the picture of uh, GAFCON bishops and primates. That's one of their uh, meetings together. And until recently, like I said, our own, very own Archbishop Benjamin Kwashi was the secretary. In fact, uh, Foley Beach, whose picture I, told, I showed you, was the chairman of GAFCON. And of course, it was started by our very own Archbishop Akiola. So we need to be, to, to, to be very loving towards one another and to our sister, uh, Anglican communion, with which we are in fidelity with scripture. But again, I don't know what, what uh, Nigeria is doing and the Nigerian, the Nigerian leadership, you know, playing KG with the organization that we helped to start. This is the one that really bothers me and I need to get into this. Very recently, Bishop Oji, remember him? He was, the, he was the diocesan bishop of the Anglican Diocese of the West who left at the end of 2022, was suspended after he left. <laughs> and then he's now with ACNA. So for their synod that will be coming up in July, they invited Archbishop Akanya of Kebi. Our Archbishop and Primate and Metropolitan put pressure on this. Can you see the e poster and flyers were already made? Put pressure on this bishop after he had accepted to re reject the invitation to come and preach the gospel. I mean, <laughs> Didn't the Bible says how beautiful the feet of them that preach the gospel, right? Put pressure. Now remember, Akna is a sister province that we, Nigeria, helped to form. Akna doesn't preach gay uh, marriage and all this thing, all this slander that is going around. Please, brethren, don't, please stop it. They don't. But that's not the first time this is happening. This is a pattern. It's a repeated pattern that, sadly, my primate, Henry Ndukuba, has indulged and engaged in. And I'm going to give you a few more examples. Two weeks ago, at the Anglican Church of, uh, at, at the Anglican Church here in Edmonton, the Mercy Chapel. Fantastic preacher. I've listened to that uh, brother, the, the director there. He invited two bishops from Nigeria, Bishop Ezio Four and uh, Bishop Okeke from Nigeria, to come for a four day retreat. That bishops started that parish, I think about six years ago. They're doing well. They are doing really well. That church started from scratch and they're doing awesomely well. Uh, that bishop, I listened to that, that Baba preach at the ordination of some uh, clerics, uh, a brother, a brother doctor in, 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 in Toronto now, and another one in British Columbia. And uh, I happened to act as the registrar on that particular day. Awesome brother, and I thank God for him and his ministry. But anyway, the primates, uh, I know what happened. Uh, bishop Nathan Kano leaned on them and then he told the primate, and the primates wrote to these two bishops not to come to preach the gospel to Nigerians who are in, still in the Church of Nigeria. These people are not even under Bishop Adebogun. And he made them to not come for this event. This is my primate stopping people from coming to preach the gospel. I can tell you my own personal experience. There are women in the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity in September last year. They had planned for months. One of the concerns of the wife of the bishop was that a lot of women in the across the diocese, you know, in Canada, in the US, are complaining that their children are beginning to, 
you know, be seduced by, you know, the spirit of the age, all these um, uh, trans, um, LGBT and all that stuff. And she wanted us, my, I'm a doctor, my wife is a doctor, to confront, the, to speak to this. And we had prepared. And there were other uh, facilitators to speak on other topics. A day before that conference was to start, that was around the time they did all this dissolution of the uh, And the primate said that we should cancel that event. This is something that is a big issue here in North, North America. Something that will be of benefit to members of this diocese. I don't know about Nigeria, it may not be an issue in Nigeria, but it's an issue for us here. The primate stopped it, cancelled it. This is a very, these are things that are tearing the very fabric of families here. Anglicans are living here. Anglicans whose children are dealing with this pivotal issue. It doesn't, the, our, our primate does, it, it's not his business. Council says. I'll give you one final one. The same Archbishop of Kebi. He was a facilitator, a, a speaker at the Anglican Diocese uh, at, at, a, at a synod in 2023. That was before this dissolution. This was back in July. I actually took this image out of the promotional video of, of uh, a synod last year. I, I got, later got to know from some of the communication that the primate was unhappy, even though the dissolution of, this, uh, of, the, of the diocese hadn't happened, but he was unhappy that this archbishop, by the way, this archbishop is actually senior to our primate, that, but he was unhappy that this archbishop came to minister in New Jersey in, to, to us. At the time that, you know, seemingly there was no problem, but obviously because he was unhappy with the bishop, that this bishop, this archbishop came to minister. How can you be unhappy that somebody came to preach the gospel to fellow Christian? Archbishop, primate, what's happening? I personally feel offended that you are preventing, you're standing in the way of someone who is coming to preach the good news to me. Do you want him to come and preach the bad news to me? Abba. In Apostle John's third letter, in that one, it's just one, one single chapter, he was praising Gaius for facilitating the gospel, the good news. In the second part of that one chapter uh, letter, he was excoriating Diotrephus, who he said refused to receive the brethren, in fact, forbade those obeyed them and was putting people out of the church. This is a tyrannical, you know, this petty rivalry happening in the church. To what extent? Paul, writing to the, to the Corinthian church, you know, about the middle of the first century, was saying, uh, some people, are, some of you are saying you are for Paul, you are for Apollos. We are, that's how far we're divided now. Ah, are you for, you are for, those of you guys, you are for, you are Judas, you are, you are for Adibogon, you are for OG, you are for Ndukuba, you know, you know, we're, we're for the primates. Why are we dividing one church? The youth in Nigeria are now moving towards ancestral worship. We are not confronting it. They are saying that uh, they are condemning Bishop Ajayi Crowder for, for translating the Bible. We are, we are not even out there answering their question. We are busy fighting one another. And yet we have universities, we have academics from yin to yang. We have institutions. We are not confronting that. On Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, I saw this beautiful picture. My primate washing the feet. Beautiful. I put a comment there, just reminding that Monday means, you know, it comes from commandment, you know, or commandment comes from the word Monday, you know, Latin, English, all this stuff. And somebody put a comment there. It says, are you one of the rebel? Even Judas was not forgiven. I mean, forgive me. F O R G I V E N. This this is a wrong spelling. You know you don't support the primates. You know this is the stuff that you see our Pentecostal brother, uh, brethren do. You 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 say something about their uh, babas, they start they fly off the handle. Archbishop, we love you, but we don't want all this division, sir. We want to follow Jesus. Let's get rid Ephesians four. 
Mr. The one. Get, let's get rid of all this bitterness and rage and anger and preventing people from preaching, all this fighting, all this malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ, God forgive you, God forgive Adebogu, God forgive OG, God forgive every Christian. That's what we are believing in you, uh, believing for, sir. Let's stop this. The church, Anglican, Anglican Diocese of the West, Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, all of this, uh, the, the Anglican the Diocese of Jaws, the, all of this is the work of God. And they are growing. Just in the last month, we, we, two new parishes are starting just in my area here. We got new, two new clergies starting work. Didn't God walk through the previous primates to start all these things? And even if we must eventually join ACNA, this thing can be negotiated with ACNA so that, I mean, I see the beautiful work that Kenyan ministers in the, under the ministry of Bishop Oji in, in, in his diocese, they're doing, they're doing a beautiful job, like him or not. That's a man of God I, I, that I truly respect. I respect his ministry. He's your brother. Let's close rank. It's the work of Jesus Christ. He has sent us to do this. Let's check our motivation. Are we doing God's work or is this just cross power show? Who are we pleasing by all these fights? Are we submitted to Christ? I beg you, sir. I beg you. I do this respectfully. Sorry, I mean, I've spoken with passion. May God be with you and may God grant you wisdom, sir. Solomonic proportion, I pray. Wisdom to sort all these issues out. And not just you, because the reason I direct this at you is because you are the leader. And just like Mordecai told Esther, there must be a reason why God puts you in this pedestal at this point in time. And anyone that I may have, have offended, you know, by my tone, by the way I structured this, I plead for, 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 for you to forgive me. But there are many people in the pew who are, are confused with all this. They don't understand this. They are not interested in all the politics, all the rancor. They want to come to church. They want to learn. They want to be taught the scripture. That's, why, that's what the church is for. There are many of us who are, who are just loving the liturgy that God started, you know, with the Reformation in the 16th century, and the, which is the epi epitomized, you know, in, in the liturgy of the Anglican Church. The, the, the things we got from the Clapham sect, you know, the CMS movement and all that. That's what, that, that's the, that should be the focus, you know, growing and maturing brethren. This fight distracts from all of that. And that, sir, is the point. I mean, the, the, I mean, the church of Jesus Christ will obviously be built. The gates of Hades will never prevail. I plead with you, sirs. Goodbye and God bless.